You're watching World Insight with me, Tian Wei. Now I'm joined by John Chen, who is the CEO of BlackBerry. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Congratulations, I should say. The turnaround of BlackBerry. But actually, you have turned the nature of the company. This is important for today's topic, innovation. From hardware to software now, what are we looking at when it comes to future trends of innovation, Mr. Chen? A lot of people thought that we turned from a hardware to a software, which like you described. Mm -hmm. What we really have done was we took everything we know about making secure hardware to make cybersecurity software. Mm -hmm. And so the, the nature of the technology and the patent and the intellectual property behind are the same. Um, the expression, so to speak, I call it expression, which is instead of making a phone, we're making, you know, enterprise software. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what it is. And, you know, in the future, you're going to look at us doing, providing a lot more um, security and safety right. software. We have, you know, transactions that talk about safety. We'll talk about that later. Right. Um, and, and analytics and machine learning and robotics and in that area. These are all fascinating words. Let's explore them one by one. Okay. So Chen, of course, the reason why we want to talk to you is this is a very interesting crystallization of the change that we see with high-tech companies these mm -hmm. days. Coming from only the hardware now to more to uh, building a system. Mm -hmm. And you are exactly doing that. Uh, do you think that will be where the trend is when it comes to business like yours? Well, it's come to business like everybody's. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 yeah, yes, the, the whole point is about you know, we spend, the industry, when I said we, the industry spend all these um, uh, resources and time in, um, in creating data, yes. transporting data, and what you're seeing right now is we're using those data and creating a new knowledge. Right. Uh, so everything that enabled that to happen, whether it's the cloud, all the, all the buzzwords, right, the cloud and the IoT and exactly. all, you know, all these things we're talking about, it's the same thing, which is those are the tools that allow a more intelligent society to be created. Mm. That's, that's and therefore, role-playing has been different. Yep. So for yep. example, now you're teaming up with the Chinese company, I mean Chinese company, Baidu, and you're trying to make sure that in their uh, driverless cars and autonomous driving, there's going to be secured software. So how does that work? Okay. And how has that role playing differently coming from before? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you, you mentioned it. So yes, we actually are very fortunate that we're able to partner with Baidu. Uh, you know, they have a very ambitious program in autonomous yes. platform called Apollo. And what they want to do is they, they want to build, build an open system that allow other people to add their technology on top mm. to create a bigger and bigger system. Right. So we don't want to do advertisement for them, but I, I won't, just I to, won't. Well, we want to make sure uh, that other Chinese companies are also trying to do uh, very uh, similar things. I, by the way, I love to work with other Chinese companies also. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, but, so they have picked us as the safety operating system. Yes. So the core underneath that Apollo platform is going to be um, BlackBerry operating systems. <laughs> about these kind of operations, it could be absolutely fascinating. But, Mr. Chen, it could also be absolutely vulnerable. Mm. If you look at earlier what is going on between China and the United States, IPR issue, trade issue, geopolitics issue, these could be the issue deciding on the fate of your cooperation with the Chinese companies. Yes, it does. But that's part of the global doing business globally. Uh, it's not only Chinese, it's everywhere. Um, some different countries are a little bit more uh, easier, uh, some a little bit more difficult. You but know. China has been labeled by the United States as so-called a strategic competitor, so that is absolutely different from just, let's like, just say, any other country. Yes, uh, that is true. There are also other countries, by the way. We do business in Russia and we do business in Pakistan, so I wouldn't just say this is a China only, but it is true, China being such a big market right. and big opportunity, so naturally all the, all the attention are focus here, which is, which is absolutely correct. So what would that mean for a business like yours in the United States? When you seek a partnership, mm -hmm. when you think about a future that you need to build together, mm -hmm. you have to think mid-term and long-term. Yes. So what would these factors mean for you? Decision well, uh, that, that's, um, that's one of the reasons why the IPR issue is front and center to the dispute right now going on between the two countries. Um, I think who own the IPRs or, or I would say a fair ownership of the IPR because this is very important because mm -hmm. the Chinese also generate IP. So this is not a, a United States exactly. or Canadian 
only phenomena. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but because the can Canadian and the U Americans are so far ahead in terms of the intellectual property, um, so today it seems like it's one-sided. But I think over time it changed. But this is one of the reasons why transparency of the of the um, uh, of the collaboration is important. This is also why where. Um, I think you know a, a, a good governance structure mm. is needed. Uh, mm. You know, where do, wh who who settled the dispute fairly? Mm. Uh, where do you launch the complaints? Uh, all these needs to be put together. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But the question is, what kind of mechanism, what kind of system we are talking about? Are we going to throw away the old system, so-called old system, like WTO and others, and just to do it bilaterally, no matter what, with tariffs? By the way, that was 1970s. So, or are we going to in, try to improve the imperfect system and make it work. That is the question. Right. That's interesting. Uh, first of all, um, tariff. Uh, I I I I don't sign up for tariff either. I, I don't think that's that's like you said 1970s. But doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't really work. Uh, I think time after time, time has been proven. Yeah. Um, now the WTO systems is have a couple of interesting situation with that. Uh, I would like to improve the WTO system to encompass because that's structurally the most sensible. Yeah. Uh, but in there, there are a couple of things that we need to improve. Uh, first of all, it doesn't favor smaller company. Mm. You know, in order to launch a dispute at the WTO, you got to be a very big company, have enormous resources mm. uh, that drives the government to represent you. Okay, you know, if you are a startup or a... But you have alliance, you have associations. Yes, you have alliances, but if you get into a meeting with the alliance, uh, the, the associations or the chamber, they have many different masters to serve. Right. Uh, it is not like you know one member say we need to do this, and therefore everybody say yes. You know, so so there's a lot of um, there's a, the process t is too takes too long and too much money. Mm -hmm. I think that needs to be streamlined. Mm -hmm. right? So that, for example, that would be a very big one. The, the speed of the decision. Mm -hmm. It's also a very, you know, it could definitely need some improvement. So, yes, I would, I would support changing, uh, modernizing the WTO system to settle a lot of these disputes like trip and all that. Mm. But um, it needs to be faster and it needs to be more inclusive. Uh, have we begun that process of making it better? to make it faster, inclusive, more efficient by doing this trade or apparent trade war? Oh, the apparent trade war won't help that. Not at all? Not at all, mm. my opinion. I, I, I think th this has got to be resolved at the WTO level. Mm. Um, and and have we, no, I have not seen evidence that this is top of priority. several issues going on at the same time. On the one hand, you want the system to catch up mm -hmm. as a business yeah. so that your rights can be protected. Yeah. On the other hand, the businesses try to shy away from regulations as well. For example, what you see now with Facebook, mm -hmm. the evolving of Facebook over the past few years vis-a-vis -vis regulations and questioning mm -hmm. from the public and also mm -hmm. the Congress. Mm -hmm. And so we see this week is going to be a big event. But the thing is, how do you see business role? Mm -hmm. in this regard. Mm -hmm. The role being governed, mm -hmm. being regulated, and the role also want to see more freedom. How to keep that balance, Mr. Chen? Yeah, um, so I, I am not, everybody has different opinions. Of course. Okay? So, so I'm going to only give you my opinion. I, I am not one for big regulation, big governments. Um, I think that's stifle innovation for sure, in my opinion. Um, so, but a certain level of references a reference point is needed. Um, mm. You know, just like you know, drunk driving. Drunk driving has a has, has a number, right? You know, if you you if you're over that, you're drunk. You're not legally drunk, even if you could drive well. Uh, or if you're below that, you're not. Mm. So there needs to be a reference point set, uh, and 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 there needs to be a law that say you shall not drive when you're drunk. Mm. So I I I think you know you can just kind of um, you know make it. And make a global statement about right. this. But in general, I favor uh, less government, less regulation, because that have been proven, that have improved innovation. Technologically speaking, we are seeing enormous amount of innovation. This is going to be a huge opportunity. But at the same time, you also see enormous amount of geopolitical changes mm -hmm. with the rise of China, with the United States looking more inward, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, not to mm -hmm. mention other countries. So mm -hmm. with all of these moving factors, mm -hmm. 
as an entrepreneur yourself, mm -hmm. as a seasoned business person who's fascinated by geopolitics, where are we going? What tool do we have in hand to make the world still peaceful and improving? Yeah, um, good question. A I long sigh, I heard it, <laughs> sir. I, um, I, I, I think, you know, we have... We need to first think about why are there so many uh, innovation and opportunities? We don't think about that. It's because the system in the last 40 years, 60 years, in China it was 40 years, yeah. you know, in the United States it was right after the World War II, yes. right? So it, it, that system is, has been creating all these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that system underpinning is globalization. I think what the geopolitical issue right now that I could see as a business person is, is, is getting to be more protective of this landscape. Um, I think we need to go back to globalization. Mm. Um, that's my opinion. To the real globalization. To the real globalization. And that would imply that, you know, uh, more of the trade agreements, that would imply more of the community, uh, whether it was TPP and, you know, uh, whether it was, the, um, you know, uh, uh, WTO, mm. I think that all needs to become reality. I think that creates opportunity. It's been proven for the, for the last four or five decades. Right? So uh, that would be what I would do. But again, I'm not a politician, so I have no idea. But, mm. but that's, that would be what a businessman would like. Mm. I think we are filling the polls of the business people from this conversation with you, Mr. Chen. Thank you so much. John Chen, the CEO of BlackBerry. Thank really you. appreciate it. Sir. Thank you. Thank you.